Hello guys and welcome back to master class number eight. Uh, in this class we're going to be going over songs, uh, specifically naming them properly, categorization, and specific markers and different points you can add in songs. And also, uh, back up with timing, we're going to be getting into how to actually mix in Rekordbox to see if your tracks line up with key. So first thing, as usual, load up Rekordbox should be loaded, and this is the point we had it at before with everything from our collection into one playlist that has been queued already. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is getting everything named properly. So you have four different tabs over here on the right hand side. The first one is going to be essentially your, your tags. So what I always do is I don't normally use these like the techno or the, I don't normally use the specific my tags, but what I'll do is I'll go to the untitled column and let's say I want like rooftop house music. So I'll make a rooftop house section and every time I'm going through my stuff, regardless of the genre, if I think it's a rooftop worthy song, I'm going to go to this category and check rooftop house. This can all be found um, in the my tags, which I'll show you later, but you can also find them in here by sorting. Uh, this this menu looks crazy, but all you really need to do is it's sorted by my tag. So you can see my comments for the rooftop house. You can sort by there and it will show all the tracks that you have. That's really the only thing you need to know for this right now. But otherwise, your second tab is going to be kind of stuff that matches or stuff that will work as you build your Record box library, this will become more populated with stuff that it might work with based on BPM and key. Your third one is where you're gonna do most of your work. So you have the summary of the track, which tells all the details that you can see in iTunes. And then you have your info section, which is record box specific to saving the actual on the my tag or the save file. That's why we make it MP3. So this is gonna be, if you have two different record boxes, this is what's not going to be transferable. So for example, all these hot cues and everything, if you were to give somebody the song, like you were to drag this to the desktop and give it to somebody else, since it's not in their record box and analyzed, it's not going to have this information. So this is why it's important to have it on an external hard drive. But for example, we'll load up this song. So you can either single click it or you can pull it into the playlist and it will pull up. So if you click down, it will go. So how I usually name my stuff. So I'll remove the free download from the song. I'll command X or basically cut and then paste it for artists, hit enter. And then I'll always go through the genres uh, once I have my artists done. So I'll go through here, clear the artists, put them in their artist format so it's not just one song and it's easier to search. And then I'll do the genres after that. So I'll do a couple of these really fast here. So this one, we don't have much information of. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're a little bit off, but that's what you get from each artist naming their stuff a little bit different. You just kind of got to get your own system down. So I'll leave the, the bootlegs up just so I know what is on it uh, versus having just the generic song name. Sometimes people will hide their tracks because they don't want other people to find them. I'm, I'm a big believer of if somebody likes your track show them um because then by the next time you're gonna have new music and you'll still have your old songs that you like so we've done all the track titles we've done all the artists everything looks spot on to how it should be so for example the genre we'll we'll click this song listen to the drop So this is going to be a uh, baseline UK grime. So I, my, my generic naming is baseline for kind of like the Euro kind of sounding house like that. Uh, it's its own genre. It's not a very popular genre, but it's well it's in the U S specifically, but in Europe, it's very big. Uh, I love, I absolutely love it. It's my favorite kind of house music, but it's, it's more of a upbeat kind of like gritty club environment. And then, We'll just do one more, like Champagne Eyes. So this is more liquid drum and bass. Um, some people will do just D&B. Some people will all 
But for drum and bass, I have a lot of it. So I'll specifically genre it. So I'll do like liquid DNB or I'll do DNB and then liquid. So then when I search DNB, all the DNB tracks will come up, but it has its sub sub genre in there. If we're gonna there's you can just go down the genre hole if you want, but it it's it's a pain in the neck when you're first learning. So just your basic categories of music work. Well, it's just kind of distinguished like a drum and bass track versus like a house track. It's easier to see. So we'll do one more. So bass line again. And this one could be called disco house or just house in general. Um, I'm going to call it disco house because I have a bunch of it, but a lot of these songs can be categorized as different things. It's just kind of how you want to remember it. So now that that's done, our info looks great. This last section here, you don't really need it. I don't use it much ever. Um, I use the info and then I just tab out of it. So we have our songs gridded. We have our songs aligned. We have some of the genres aligned. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be switching over to the player mode. So if you see export, performance, lighting, all that, what we're going to go is we're going to keep it at export. We're going to go to player. And then you can see you have two players instead of one. So we're going to mix these two songs together, considering they're both 9A and considering they're both dubstep at 150 beats per minute. So a lot of DJs will say, don't use sync when you're learning, which I agree with, but when you're working in Rekordbox, it's really hard. So if I were to load this song and I were to try to get it aligned with the grid, I'm going to be a little bit off. So what you can do to solve that issue is you can go here, make sure both your quantizes are on and then hit the beat sync. So what that's going to do is it's going to sync up the grids together. So we'll let this one play. So essentially we'll do, we'll do a breakdown here. So we have the B drop and we have the B drop. We have eight bars, 16, 24, 32. And on this one, we have eight, 16, uh, 24. So essentially, if you do the math, this one, if we let it play till A, and then we start this track, they're gonna drop at the exact same time. That's the power of gridding your stuff and using marker points. And I'm gonna show you exactly how that works right now. So for this one, we're gonna let it play out to where it says eight bars or when it gets to the eight. And then we're gonna hit the play on here since they're synced up. And I'm gonna show you just how well these work. So you'll notice all the tracks are aligned. Uh, some tracks just don't work with each other, but these are for now. So if you see the countdown, it's counting down to the next marker point. Once you get to the point, you can see it like now it's at eight bars for each of the songs. When those are lined up, you know they're going to be spot on with the drop if your grids are aligned properly. So I'm just chopping between the two channels. And you can see they sound pretty clean together. Um, same artist, but it also at the same time, it's kind of dubstep. Uh, so we'll do two different songs now. So we'll do this one, which is at 127. And then we'll do another one. We'll do this one. We'll try to find one in the same key. So the, these essentially aren't going to work because of the keys, but I'll just show you what I mean. Uh, so we'll start this one off. And then we'll throw it on a loop, which are right here. So we'll throw it on a loop in once it hits zero bars on there. There we go. So now with our grids aligned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit play on this top track and the bottom one's gonna keep looping while the top one plays in sync. So we're gonna hit it in Right. 
So that's essentially how you can emergency loop or loop out of your track and load another same, I would say chillness track, same vibe track into it. So they're still both playing. And what you can do is, we, we just missed it there, but essentially we can end the loop once So if you can see, they're both aligned still. They're all in sync and this is all done in record box. So it's kind of a, these two songs would not work together. So I wouldn't put them together, completely different genres, completely different vibes, but it's just kind of a, to get you to show that regardless of the tracks being completely different, you can get the grids to align. So that's how I've got some of my best combinations of music. But other than that, this is the base of getting your stuff set up and seeing what works with each other in record box. Whereas most of the time, a lot of people think, Oh, I need CDJs or I need club equipment to see. No, this is how I do it. Like I barely even touch my CDJs when I'm preparing a set. It's just seeing how these songs work together. And obviously as your library grows, you're going to have a lot more options and you're not just going to be limited to, okay, I can go from 11 a to a 12 B to another 12 B. It'd be more so you have multiple 11 A's, you have multiple 9 A's, so you you can see what works and see what doesn't. I would say in the same key, about half the stuff works, half the stuff doesn't, and it's just kind of figuring out what specifically that is for you. So I think that sums up uh, Masterclass number eight. Uh, in the next one, we're going to be looking at all the final features uh, you need up until the point where you export. But for now, that is how you mix in Rekordbox and how you utilize a two-player. And this is all done in the free version. Every single version has this available. So I will see you guys in class nine.